Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another five minute video. Did I win my last game? Oh, it turns out I did. I have a two game winning streak going. Wait a second, that can't be right. According to my history, I've won six and drawn two out of my last eight. I feel like I've been playing like crap. How is that even possible? I guess I'm slightly underestimating my, my recent results. Anyway, let's get it on. And we are waiting to play an opponent. Let's see if we can keep not losing. Uh, gotta get back above 2400. Almost there. Just a few more points to go. Uh, let's real quickly check out the best lists. Beat this guy. Okay, best list is 2450. So that's what we need to get to. Whoa, Martin De Campo, man, he's up to 2529. Way to go. Here we go. Pair down, and it's going to be a Nimzo Indian or a Bogo Indian, which I have studied recently. I've studied my black openings, so that's good. <laughs> and basically, in this position, I, I just learned this, so we're going to see how it goes. That's not normal. Now I get an improved version of this, this entire Bogo Indian, basically. Yeah, this is like supposed to be pretty nice for me. I don't really know what to do though. Ah, uh, you know what? I'm gonna play this move so that e4 could be strong because his knight can't come to g5. Then it's so like rookie one e4. The knight's almost trapped. Just an interesting thing to point out. Rookie one e4 g5 traps the knight because e4 he would have to go to h4. All right. So now what the heck to do? Knight c6 seems reasonable, but then he goes d5. Bishop g4, h3. Um, I'm just going to go c6. Uh, do I want to do that? I'm going to go a5. Change my mind. Maybe a4 could be annoying someday. c6, I'm worried someday c5 could be slightly annoying. Probably I'm being a little paranoid. You know, I'm going to... Mm, if I push this pawn, I can get weak. But on the other hand, I like it. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to go knight c6 now. If he goes d5, he gives me a c5 square to stick my knight someday. So I would just go back to b8 and then go to like a5, a6 to c5. So that seems reasonable to me. I'm still waiting for him to go rookie one and, and tr self trap his knight, but it looks like he's not going to do it. He's, he's avoided doing it for quite a few moves now. e4 could be a good move anyway, by the way. I mean, maybe I should just do it. Right, I'm going to take this. Let's see, e4, knight e1, and then just like bishop g4. Actually, bishop g4 contains a threat of e4 followed by bishop e2. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to just go e4. And then bishop g4 is my idea. I don't know if this is right or not. We'll find out soon enough. I'm threatening bishop e2. He probably has to go f3 unless I'm missing something. Maybe he can take on e4 with f3 at the end, but it looks kind of sketchy. I think he would... Ha I mean, probably he has to do something like f3 or... Oh, I didn't see that because I suck. Um, it's typical for me to just miss simple things. I I'm going to defend, over overprotect my e4 pawn. <coughs> the guy's... I don't know if I like what I did. If I put, if I kept that pawn on e5, I really had kind of like a stranglehold. If he goes d5, it's a key question. I'm thinking, thinking about knight e5 sacrificing a pawn. I have a feeling it's good. Um, but right, he's not, he's not going for that. Instead, he's going for b5, which is a logical move. Give me a minute to figure out what the heck's going on here. Queen d7 seems somehow logical to me. But b5 is annoying. Uh, what if I go d5? That just seems wrong to me, but maybe it's okay. He just goes b5 then. It doesn't feel right. Alright. Alright, Greg. Focus. Focus, focus. I 
I do not know what to do. Maybe I should just stick my bishop on e on d3. Now then f3 is undermining. Uh, I'm gonna retro I'm gonna preemptively move back. <clears throat> A little strange, I admit. But my knight here is more flexible. He'll probably trade everything then go rook a1. Which is kind of annoying because his queen will get the open A file. His pieces are well posted. I I don't love my position, I have to be honest. I think he just do, should just do massive trades. This E4 move, I put my pawn on E4 in like a kind of perilous spot. I feel like I'm going to have to go, okay, this is useful. Because after, after this move, now my E pawn is defended and my queen is free to move. So... I'm happy that he played that move. Because I have freedom with my queen. I want to go queen e5 now. I feel that, like I have less space, so a queen trade would be useful for me. Um, again, though, there's unpleasantness after knight d4, knight b5, perhaps. Let, let's just see. I can, if bishop g6, knight b5, how big of a deal is this? Maybe a big deal. I think I may have to try to creatively sack my e pawn. I'm gonna because the thing is, if he takes on e4, I can take on c4. So I'm just trying to keep things under control. I felt that knight knight b5 was really annoying. Note also, I'm attacking his h pawn in some. Whoa, I can take on d5. I think that was a bad move. We'll find out soon enough. I mean, it wasn't a great move what he did. I don't. I don't know if he he had to give up release the pressure like he did. I guess I'm just going to take this. Or maybe... Uh, I'll just take it. <clears throat> Somehow I don't love what he did. I'm not sure that it's great for me exactly. He can always take on d6 and take on b7. It should be okay here. Um, but I'm not like much worse or anything. And I have the h-pawn to attack in some key positions. Like now I could take and then take on h3. Whatever, I'll take my pawn, man. I feel like at least I have some winning chances now. I'm up a pawn. Uh, my clock is a little low, so I'm going to have to start moving fast at this point. I want to catch up on the clock. That's uh, goal number one here. I'm going to try to spend the, like, the next ten moves, I'm going to try to move really fast. <coughs> and just keep control of the position. But I'm not going to try to do anything too aggressive. Just stay up on time, and then... That opens up a lot of possibilities for me. Um, I have to hold on to my pawn, which is not so easy to do. Ugh, it's rook d8, I guess. It's a little passive, but I, I didn't know what else to do. <clears throat> and I still have a, I have a 10 second, ooh. Well, I have to trade, I guess. Still holding on to the pawn for dear life. Even if I lose that pawn, yeah, if I lose the pawn, it's just a draw. So I have to be really... See, he's trying to win it back. He's spending time trying to win that pawn back. Which is going to cause him to, to fall down on the clock. I'm going to go king f8 to e7. Defending pawn even further. And he's going to eat up a lot of time trying to, trying to win this pawn back, basically. <coughs> so I feel like that, that helps me quite a bit. Um... Looks like a useful move that I can play quickly. Also useful looking. He has to go back with his king to f4, I think. f6 threatens mate. I'm going to do it, because g5 is checkmate. Knight d3 might have been mate in one. No, it wasn't. N now, okay, he's avoided mate. Um, I'm going to go back here then. Knight d3 is strong, but is it mate? Not really. So I'm going to just go for this endgame and assume I have good winning chances because of the uh, time advantage, the extra pawn. All of this smells smells good for me. Bishop d1 is almost mate. Mm, I'm just going to keep these on the board. Check. I don't think I should take. I'm gonna keep the tension a little bit here. 
because I have this time edge still. So no reason to be um, doing anything too committal. Oh, he's moving fast now. reroute. Thank you. <laughs> he blundered a pawn. He had no time left and now the position is hopeless. I win! Yippee! Hello to the six people watching on the live stream. So that was kind of a... I had an extra pawn but once I had that extra pawn I utilized some blitz strategy just to increase the... you know make sure that I don't lose on time. Um, it's a tricky way of playing chess, but basically the point is I'm up a pawn, I just need to keep things calm, take an opportunity when it prevents itself, or when it presents itself, but if it doesn't, I'm still up a pawn if I can just maintain the position for as long as possible. He's going to generally spend more time because he feels like he needs to find a way to kind of get his pawn back or force a draw, whereas I can just maintain the position and I'm always up a pawn. So if any time I have to try to win on the board, I can try and do it. But I was in no rush, you know, no, no hurry at all. And, you know, basically I was able to win that way. Um, early in the game, <coughs> excuse me, the setup should be pretty decent for me. Um, I wasn't so sure about my move E4. I felt like he just kind of made some kind of... First of all, I'm not sure about a4 also. I think maybe I should just play knight, knight c6 right away because it makes it harder for him to go b4. Um, but like, like the key is a c5 square here. I want to have it for my knight in those positions. When I play a4, well, he immediately goes b4, and if, if my a5 pawn is not here to stop him from going b4, then in the future... Okay, let's say I make a random move like this. Now when he goes to this move, I don't have c5 anymore. So, because of that, I'm a little skeptical of my a4 move. I, I mean, I think, I think e4 was fine. I think, though, I should play bishop f5. Just overprotect the e-pawn so that my queen is free to move around the board. I didn't do that, and I felt like I had some slight difficulties, but fortunately, he kind of... He kind of released the tension too early, uh, resulting in some massive trades that seemed to be good for me. I won a pawn and was able to win in the end. It wasn't easy, but I got the W. So thanks all for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.